Another great example of a random variable is with the geometric distribution. And with the geometric distribution, we can calculate a lot of really cool probabilities. And it's actually really easy. Hopefully you've already watched the video on the binomial distribution. If you haven't, I recommend it. Geometric is very slim, similar, but a little bit different. Let's dive into an example. Kylie's probability of making a free throw shot is 85%. Awesome, free of charge, we know that she has an 80 or 15% chance of missing a free throw. Each shot is independent of the next. Build a probability distribution for how many shots it takes to get her first made basket. Now we really have to understand that this is a great example of a random variable. X represents how many shots it takes to get her first basket. Okay, think about that. How many shots could it take her to get her first basket? Well, it could take her one shot. Can't be zero, right? Because you, you can't get your first shot if you don't take any attempts. So it could be her very first shot, or it could be her second shot is when she makes her first free throw, or her third shot could be when she makes her first free throw, or her fourth shot could be when she makes her first free throw, or her fifth shot. Okay, you get the point. Now, this would be a discrete random variable due to the fact that the list of outcomes are, well, listable. There is a list. They're all whole numbers. Like, it makes sense this is a discrete random variable. But technically, some might even say it's a little bit continuous. And I'm not trying to violate the fact that this could be both discrete and continuous at the same time. Most people will say that this is a discrete random variable because you can make a list of the outcomes and their whole numbers. But if you think about it, it could go all the way to, I mean, it could be 100 attempts to get her first basket. 99 misses and she finally makes her first on that 100th shot. So we could extend this list do, 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 all the way down to 100. Now, listen, that would be very, very unlikely. Um, you know, she's an 85% free throw shooter, right? So she's pretty good. She definitely should make a shot well before her 100th, but you never know. Now, that would be very unlikely to go to that far, but I guess it's possible. So that's where you start to think, well, this list, even though it's nice whole numbers, is a really long list. All right, now this scenario is what we call a geometric probability or a geometric distribution scenario. The idea here is that we're looking for a first success. Remember, if you watch the video over binomial, or if you haven't watched the video over binomial, binomial, you're given a set, a number of attempts, and you're looking at how many successes you have in those attempts. So if we say, all right, Kyle, you're shooting 10 free throws, that's it, 10 free throws, and um, I'm going to count how many you make. That's a binomial situation. We're here. We're going to stop. All we care about is getting her first success. So that's where you're going to see this geometric probability scenario come up. Now, listen, it's not like you knowing that it's geometric honestly even matters. What matters is that you know to do the problem. But at the same time, it's just a special name given. So we have discrete random variables and a, and a geometric is just a very special type within that. Now, if you're in a geometric probability, you know, you got to be given the probability of success, right? You can't do the math if you're not given the probability of success. In this case, it's an 85% chance to make the shot. And again, free of charge, really, she has a 15% chance to miss it. And the other thing that makes it geometric, I'll say it one more time, is that we're looking for the first success. All right, now there are three more rules that have to apply for it to really all come together and work mathematically. Each outcome can only be success or fail. She's either going to make the shot or she's going to miss it. It's not like there's a third option where the ball sits on the rim. It doesn't go in. It doesn't go out. Like, no, it's either it goes in or it doesn't. The probability of success must stay the same. So if it's 85%, it can't go up or go down as she goes on. Now, listen, I want to talk about this really briefly. Some people could argue, well, where does that 85% come from? Long run relative frequency. That's probability, right? She has must have shot in thousands and thousands of free throws in her life. And she knows that over the long run, she's made 85% of them. So if she takes her next shot and she misses it, well, it technically might go down a little bit. Or if she makes that next shot, her long run relative frequency might go up a little bit. But my counter to that would be she has shot so many baskets that even if we say, all right, she makes the next one. All right, so maybe now her percentage is 85.00000001%. 
She shot so many that that one extra make isn't really going to change the 85%. Or vice versa, if she misses her next shot, it's not like it's going to dramatically drop to 80% because that 85% has come from the long run. So even if she does miss that next shot, what is it going to go to? 84.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
So 0.15 to the first, 0.85, that's making out her second shot. Or it could be on her first shot, which would just be 0.85. So again, it says she makes her first shot on or before the third. So this is on the third, on the second, on the first. Multiply and add all those together. And we actually already found those probabilities. So, I mean, if we already have that table that we just made, you could go back to that table and just add the values together. But it's pretty simple, 0.9966. So extremely, extremely likely that she does make it on or before her third shot. All right, another one that's slightly more confusing, but actually really easy if you think about it. What is the probability her first comes after the sixth shot? So we're trying to find the probability that X, her first success, is greater than the six. Not equal to, it says after the six. It's got to be anything after the six, which I guess we could be, technically, that would be anything greater than or equal to seven because a decimal value is impossible here. But anyway, however you want to word it, we know that, um, you know, got to walk through this, right? So let's think about this. We want her first success to be after the sixth attempt. So the first attempt had to be failure. Second attempt had to be failure. Third attempt had to be failure. Fourth attempt had to be failure. Fifth attempt had to be failure. Sixth attempt had to be failure because we want her first to come after the sixth. Now, her seventh could be her first make or it could be a failure and then she has to go to her eighth shot to get her first make or the ninth or the 10th or the 11th. Literally anything after six is possible. So when does she get her make? I don't care. I just care that it happens after the six. So to be honest, I'm already done. The answer to the question is 0.15 to the six because all I need is the first six to be failures. Then her first success could come anywhere after that. I don't care. All that matters is that it happens not on the first, not on the second, not on the third, not on the fourth, not on the fifth, not on the sixth. Other than that, I'm good to go. So a lot of kids say, well, don't you have to incorporate a 0.85 somewhere because you're looking for her first success, right? Yes, but the question doesn't tell me when that first success happens. It just is anywhere after the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteen, fourteen, fifth, blah, 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 even all the way to that possible 100. So all that matters because what all of those have in common is that the first six are misses. So that's it, 0.15 raised to six. And this is very unlikely to happen, again, because she should make it on the first three, but this is 0.00001114. If you're using a calculator, you get some scientific notation there. So again, very unlikely. It, it should happen before that because she's a really good free throw shooter. All right, so again, this is a geometric situation. Keep in mind that you have to be given the probability of success, and the question needs to be very clear that you're looking for the first success. That's what the random variable is. When do you get? What trial, what shot, in the context of this problem, does that first success happen on? And then you got to have to meet these rules. Don't forget about these three conditions. They are pretty important, and um, they're pretty simple, but they do matter, and, and they should be true, but you never know. So just make sure that you got success or fail. Probably success cannot change. And then we need the trials to be independent. All right, that's it for geometric distributions.